amongst the supporters of channel member PP0476. Well, here's a thing. If everything goes our way today, we could finish this episode top of League 1 and having won our Champions League qualification group. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Hello and welcome to part 83 of the Tour de France. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have a big game in the league away against Monaco. And then we're also going to be playing Benfica in our Champions League qualifiers. They're not qualifiers, they're group stage matches. But yeah, Champions League means nothing until you're in the knockout rounds, which, by the way, we already are. Um, we got through in the last game against the Swiss club and we actually very nearly messed it up. We played a very heavily rotated team, as you can see, lots of young players in there. Maybe took them a little bit too lightly. Um, on 70 minutes, we brought on Del Palacio, Langa, Omar and Benavides. And Langa scored two free kicks to turn it around and win us the match. But the young players really not doing themselves very many favours at all there in that match. But we did scrape through. So that's what our Champions League group looks like. And then domestically, Paris Saint-Germain are having a little bit of a wobble. Having drawn against us in the last episode... They've then drawn again away against Lille, who are down in fourth place, um, which does mean they're only two points ahead of us now. We face Monaco while they're playing Nantes, who again are right up there as one of the uh, as one of the better teams in the division. So if things go our way this weekend, we could find ourselves top of Ligue 1, still unbeaten, having played Paris Saint-Germain and Monaco. I'm not saying we can win the league this year. Maybe we can win. That. Have we got anyone in the Dream 11? Of course we haven't. I mean, the, the gap is still so very large. But we're getting better and better all the time. And we are back to full strength for the game against Monaco as well, having done lots of resting, rotating, sending players on holiday for the uh, for the last episode, for the last few matches, really. We've had a little bit of a mid-season break, but we are now back to full strength. And fingers crossed, we can go out there and get the result against the club. That is still our parent club. We've got Magothu in goal, of course, Signed from Monaco. Simon, Say, Capital and Laurent at the back. Milinkovic at the base of the midfield. Fowry and Del Palacio Langer ahead of him. And then Benavides, also signed from Monaco on the left. And Guaymer on the right. And Afkir Omar up front. This is the first time that front three have played together in five or six matches. Uh, through various players being injured on holiday. Just being rested and rotated out of the team. So... Hopefully, it doesn't take them too long to click back into the kind of form that we were showing before we gave ourselves our little uh, self-inflicted mid-season break. And hopefully, having that little bit of time off, rotating against the Swiss club, hopefully all of that means that we are fresher than Monaco for this game. Because Monaco, of course, finding things a little bit tougher in the Champions League than we are this year. So they're not in, yet in a position where they can start rotating their teams, whereas we've already qualified. We are going to try and beat Benfica to win the group because then you get a preferential draw in the next round. But that last game against Rangers, the reserves are out for that unless things go badly against Benfica. And Fowry has just opened the scoring away against Monaco. It's taken us less than four minutes to get on the score sheet. And it is... I mean, if there's a typical tour goal these days, it looks a lot like this. Fowry or Langer bursting out of midfield and uh, having the through ball from Omar or Nguema um, and then just slotting the ball past the goalkeeper. It's it's how we do our football, either that or near post corners to Capital. But he hasn't scored that many of them this year. Um, Nguema now on the right gives it to Fowry and now Omar dropping wide this time, plays it back to Laurent. Langer is there and less than six minutes on the clock and we are 2-0 up over Monaco. Oh, blimey. Oh, goodness me. I don't, don't even have the words. This is where I need... I need to swear. I'm, I'm not even swearing. I'm just pressing the button. I, I mean, we are... We're quite good, aren't we? I think we're the second best team in France now. I mean, it's a bit early to declare it, but especially because Paris Saint-Germain have just gone ahead in their game as well. That man, Erling Haaland again. But I think there's, there's two big clubs in France... And we're one of them. We're still a ways behind Paris Saint-Germain. But I think at this point, unless things really turn on their head in this match, we can safely say we have surpassed Monaco through <laughs> constantly taking their best young players off them for several years. I mean, how different would it be if they had Magothu, Benavides, 
I mean, I guess Gonzalez is still nowhere near their team like he was nowhere near our team. But uh, yeah, this is this is exciting times for tour fans. Not that there are many of them. We can still only fit 16,000 fans into our stadium. We do move into the new one in this coming summer as well. It is all starting to come together, boys and girls. Lauren, on the right, plays it across looking for Del Palacio Langer. Have we won a penalty here? Still in the first half and with the opportunity to go 3-0 up against our parent club. How much longer are they going to agree to be our parent club for? Should we just, I mean, what we should really do on the way out today, just nip into their director of football's office and just suggest we flip the agreement and we'll be their parent club for a bit because it's 3-0 and Guayma has scored from the penalty and it's it's easy peasy. Monaco nil, tour three currently. I am very much having a good time around about now. Um, I'm also, look. I mean, I'm thinking in terms of, do we start taking players off to rest them? Against Monaco. I never thought we would be in this position at this point. And you know what? Monaco are in real danger now. We've seen this in, I think it's in the Leamington save that I play over on Twitch. We just had a little check in on the French League because, uh, yeah, one of our players we signed from Monaco. And we noticed they'd actually been relegated to Ligue 2 in that universe because they'd fallen out of this little top three. And as soon as the Champions League money stopped, they absolutely collapsed and just ended up falling out through the bottom of the league. So it's a potentially dangerous time for Monaco. The likes of Lille, Lorient, they are they are lurking. They are lurking, ready to surpass Monaco and join us as the Champions League clubs coming out of this league. And uh, Monaco need to be very careful. And we're making... In fact, we're not going to make loads of changes. What am I doing? I'm in autopilot mode. We're leaving everybody on. Um, I know we're 3-0 up, but I don't want to. I don't want to risk anything going wrong we've got a week off in fact, i think it's two weeks off i think we've got the international break now so we've got a little bit of time to recover from this i think we leave the players on until they're too tired to continue just to make sure that we uh that we don't throw it all away because they are still monaco at the end of the day they are still going to be a threat they've got a player like moise keen up from who we'd love to be able to bring somebody like that in he wouldn't necessarily be starting week in week out but we're actively on the lookout for a striker. The board have finally rel relented and agreed to give me a little bit of extra money. We've got an £11 million transfer budget heading into January, and I just can't find a striker for that price range. They're all either really young, and when you look at the really young ones, Bamba, who's already here on loan, is probably the pick of the bunch as far as the scout reports go, and I, I would be really uncomfortable spending £11 million on him at the moment. And then everybody who's that next tier up who we'd actually want to bring in and compete with Omar a 30 or 40 million pounds. So we still can't really afford to bring in anybody that's actually going to improve us, which is, it's it's not ideal, but we'll, we'll try. We will keep plugging away. We will try and find a striker. And I mean, I'm looking at Keane thinking he's probably quite old now. I don't know how, I mean, he's probably well in his 30s. But if Monaco don't want him anymore, we'll give him a home for a season because I think he'd probably still be able to do a pretty decent job for us. Probably going to be a better option than Bamba. Although well, Bamba did score a hat-trick recently in a league game while while Omar was on his little holiday. But one, one of them was a penalty. It was still a hat-trick, though. So maybe, maybe Bamba, if we gave him a little bit more time, maybe he is someone we should throw some cash at. I don't know. Like I say, money to spend. It's a lovely a lovely situation to be in. Money to spend, no idea who to spend it on. And we've got lots of uh, Middle Eastern teams trying to bring Rafik Bertrand in as well. We've agreed to let him go for £21 million. He wants to leave because he knows he'll earn more if he goes and plays in, I don't even know, whatever Middle Eastern countries I'm throwing money around. Um, no one's offered £21 million yet, but if anyone does, that's him out the door as well. And then Blin just becomes... Fourth choice, Svetkovic becomes third choice at the back. Um, and there could be more money flowing in through that route. I wonder at what point we can afford to bring Millet back, who's not really playing for Brentford. They are still in the Premier League. He's only played 10 times, only scored three goals. I wonder if the opportunity will be there to, to bring Millet back to the club at some point in the next year, year and a half. And if we just wait for that, bide our time, keep our money... But that, boys and girls, that is a changing of the guard moment. Monaco nil, tour four. We are a good team. 
Now we're going to play a couple more matches, hopefully keep winning them, and be back for Benfica. Picked up a nice little 5-0 win over Leon, which keeps the league table looking very nice for us. I mean, we've got two of the top three scorers in Omar and Benavides, We're only two points behind PSG, still unbeaten, well ahead of Monaco. We are looking good to be an established Champions League club going forward, which is exactly what we need to push this club on to the next level. So in that vein, today we can win our group. So we're going to put out our full strength team, hopefully pick up the win, because then in the final game against Rangers, we can stick the reserves out and focus on the league for a good few months. So McGough threw in goal, back for of Simon Say, Capital and Laurent, Milinkovic, Fowry and Langer in midfield, Benavides and Guayma and Omar are the front three. So it's our it's our first choice team. They've just played fantastically against Leon domestically. Uh, it is worth keeping an eye out in this Benfica team on the bench there. Paul Benoit, who is a player we were very interested in a couple of years ago when we first sold Millet. He is a left winger who can also play central midfield, attacking midfielder. Can't quite fill the striker role, so it's not... He it, it wouldn't be an ideal player to bring in, but if we can pick him up for the right price to maybe play on the left or offer some competition on the left and free up Benavides to compete with Omar up front and then have Benoit and Manctolo as our two left wingers, it would be an extra body for the front three, which we really need. That's our pro. We've got this money to spend. We have two things we'd really like to do. One of them, I mean, I was going to say one more realistic than the other. They might be both completely unrealistic. We'd love to sign Del Palacio Langer permanently, but... We have 11 million, not 35 million. So I'm not sure how likely that is to happen. I still think the only way we get Del Palacio Langer permanently is if we sell Fowry, who, by the way, has now been called up into the full French national squad. He's not made his debut yet, but he is now getting in the squads. Um, so we still have an agreed price with him of 62 million. He wants to go and play in a better league. So if we get an offer from a big club abroad that is enough money to get him, we can then use that money to go straight out and get Langer, who does now want to join us. So if we're able to meet the fee PSG want, he does want to come. So that's that's less of a worry if Fowry goes, because we have players who could slot into the Fowry role. Vaquero even has done it pretty well recently. Um, we could always go back and try for Gonzalez again and try and bring him back in. Um, but that's, that's doable if Fowry goes, but otherwise it's definitely not. So that gives us that 11 million to try and find a striker and they don't exist. They just do not exist in our price range at the level we need them to be. So hopefully one just emerges from somewhere, magically discovers a French grandparent. Fowry is in here though and his effort goes just over. I'm not sure if a draw is enough for us to win the group. It's definitely not. Uh, Rangers level on points with us currently. So we might actually need to play a slightly stronger team against Rangers in that final match, especially if we're going to drop points here against Benfica. I might have to make a decision about how important winning the group is based on keeping up our league form. I don't expect to be in a position to win league in this year, but if we can carry on being only a couple of points behind Paris Saint-Germain, knowing we've still got to play them at home before the end of the season, it's hard not to give that our full focus this year. We might not get many opportunities in this save, to win League Un. Um, that being said, we might not get many opportunities to win a Champions League group either. And we are playing really poorly today. We're not really generating anything. And uh, yeah, this isn't this hasn't been great. We are going to bring on Christopher Robin because it's a European match. So you always bring Christopher Robin on in Europe. Vaquero can come in alongside him in midfield as well. And that will do for now. All eyes on Christopher Robin. He loves these big European nights. Um, let's demand more. And we've got a highlight. It's a throw in. Milinkovic gives it to Lauren, who's in a crossing position, looking for Benavides at the far post. He slightly overhit it. It's back with Simon, who is pretty good at getting kicked in those positions, but unfortunately didn't get kicked that time. So no penalty. But Lauren's back in that crossing position again. If he can find Benavides, second time of asking, he can. But the header is a poor one. Straight into the hands of the Benfica goalkeeper. It remains 1-0. 20 minutes to go in this game. 
Can we have somebody just step up and do a football, please? That's all. We're not asking for much. Christopher Robin wins it back in midfield. Omar has got Benavides to one side of him and foul reach to the other. Vaquero's burst out of midfield, though, and there is Oliver Vaquero. We were just talking about him. He was such a key man for so many years. He's kind of drifted down the pecking order over the last couple of years, but this season is having something of a re-emergence. Still only 24, 25 years old. So there's still plenty of opportunity for Vaquero to play a key role in the future of this football club. And he's popped up with a very, very important goal there. Benoit has just come on for them on the left wing. So keep an eye on him. We've talked about him already. And now we need to make our final change. It's going to be Milinkovic who comes off. He's tiring. We've got both Pierre and Costa sat there on the bench. So we'll bring Pierre on. Um, they're both pretty good options to come off the bench in that situation. And Vaquero is there to head clear from the danger again. But it is Benfica bringing it back in. Simon with an excellent piece of cover defending. And there was a little bit of viciousness from Vaquero there. I mean, we know he's got it in him. Um, it looked like he almost hit out at the player there. But we've ended up coming away with the ball after a few crunching tackles. Omar in with one again. But Vaquero is covering a lot of ground in this game. He seems everywhere. Omar now dropping deep again. And it's Robin to Benavides and just get it in the area. He does. Afkir Omar back to goal though, back to Benavides. We know he can score from there, um, but it's now with Simon who plays it into Omar in space. And that was a big chance. I think he was offside anyway. The linesman's flag is up, but that was a big, big opportunity for Afkir Omar. But now we've got the corner and we've got Capitao and there is Capitao and there is the goal. And that might just be enough to, uh, to rubber stamp Winning the group, we I think we need Rangers to concede a goal in their game. So I don't think it's enough all on its own, but that is a huge goal for us as we look to uh, push on, win the group. Rangers, I can't even see. Maybe they played earlier. in the, oh, They're playing against the Swiss club. There's no way they're dropping points. So we do need to pick up at the least a draw against Rangers. But I think at home, we should be more than capable of picking up a draw against Rangers and probably still have the opportunity to rotate ever so slightly as well. The Champions League win, though, very, very crucial when it comes to continuing to flow money into the coffers. And then we need to go and spend a big bunch of that money as well. I think, like, similar to what we did last year, we're probably going to get a whole bunch of games under our belt now and get to the point where we've got through January and into those um, knockout games that come after the January transfer window. So hopefully... In our next episode, you meet our new striker. I haven't met him yet either. No idea who he's going to be. I've just knocked my bottle of Dr. Pepper off the table. It's all going wrong. Uh, but yeah, fingers crossed. New striker. I mean, I can show you what our options are. Is it going to be one of these? Could be one of these. I don't know. Look at their prices. We could, got 95 million. We can go and get this guy. Probably not going to be him. 81 million, 65 million. Let's find anyone in our price range. And um, this guy's 7 million. And he uh, plays for Fulham in the championship. He seems Champions League quality, doesn't he? Is he any good as... I mean, he'd be nearly as good as De Girolamo with no potential to get any better if we brought him in. So that would be 7 million well spent. There's some familiar names in here as well. Rocco Vukovic still exists, still only 27. Uh, still £50 million. Pounds. Would love to bring him back to the club. Millet's on there as well. Brentford have said £52 million for him. No way he's... I mean, bottom line, we ain't getting any of them. I mean, this guy may be 24 years old, £19 million. So it's still outside of our price range. And he's got nine finishing. £19 million pounds for a striker with nine finishing, anyone? Yeah? You think that's a good idea? It's tough. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.